Greetings and welcome. This is the first ever Elven podcast, a weekly video and audio recording that I want to share with you from my Elven Starlight Temple here in Avalon. I'm Ellen Elena and I wrote over many years The Silver Wheel, which is a body of ascension teachings and wisdom gifted by the Elven Elders and the Star Elders for a new dawn, a new cycle of light, of return and remembrance of all that we are, and especially the return of an intergalactic Earth, the return, the reunion of realms, those parallel dimensions of self returning into unity so that we may arrive as all that we are upon Earth, giving our gifts and creating as we are destined to do. So part of my hope and my dream is to share one of the chapters of the Silver Wheel each moon, for each one was written by the moonlight. Um, and this moon is in the cycles of the Silver Wheel, in the galactic cycles of light, known as the Peach Moon. And it's overlit by the star dimension of Andromeda and the teaching of Stardust. It's very much the teaching of Lemuria, and I will in due course say more, you know, throughout the podcasts and the moons about Lemuria and the Elven Ones and uh, their role in this time of remembrance. But for now, with this first recording, I would just love to read to you. And just to begin here, the chapters are an immense journey, each one light encoded, deeply activational, so stop and start as you will, as you need, and, um, and just let yourself receive what you need from this. So I shall begin and just, as I say with this first recording, share the chapter itself, um, as I hope to do each moon to share the chapter that belongs to that lunar cycle. Okay, so here goes the words of the silver wheel, and this is the 11th um, teaching, the 11th chapter, and glyph. The glyph looks like this. You can also see it hanging on the banner behind me. And I was gifted these 13 glyphs and this is the 11th and all the words that come, all the words of the chapter are encoded within this glyph. This held the entirety of what follows. This is the, the code, the light form. This is the eleventh teaching of the Deerskin Book. All this sits like a handful of stardust in our hands that we must hold close to our hearts. It is most ordinary and most precious. We must always return to our ordinariness because it is where holiness lives. This is where we find the true track and imprint of our spiritual development. Buzzard tall they have hung their stars leaf by leaf within this world and still we are carried by their winds. It is a native enchantment, the path of love within the earth. This is the eleventh teaching of the Deerskin Book. Ultimately, it is only in our ordinariness that we can find the true measure of our spiritual evolution. Here we discover whether angelic vision can permeate even our most ordinary moments. Do we still prescribe to the dance between heaven and earth? Do we still find ourselves plunging back and forth between the sacred and the mundane, playing out this ancient rift in our vision? I speak now of the precious stardust of our ordinariness. This ordinariness never goes away, it is always with us. And no matter how transcendent 
our experiences, it always returns. It is our ground, and it is the nature and vibration of this ground, its atmosphere, that reveals how far we have surrendered to love, how deeply and truly we have dissolved into the pathways of love, power and truth. This ground is the subtle earth goddess who tracks us and observes us, marking our trail through the forest. She is the rocks, the crystals, the sands, soils and stones that imprint the echoes of our progress. She remembers that originally you chose to come to earth. She remembers that you chose her stardust shawl of many colours, that you arrived with deep joy because you knew that this was a miraculous gift. She remembers that you wrapped the elemental shawl of her earth hues around your shoulders and rejoiced in the infinite resonance of her dimensions. This is your innocence. This is your acceptance. This is before you began to forget before you began to reject aspects of elemental existence, to distance yourself from them. This is before you began to perceive your light journey as separate from your earth journey and made the fatal mistake of believing that they were at odds with one another. Before this, you knew that this beautiful and multi-hued ground was your journey into light. It offered you the deepest possible journey into light that could be achieved in this universe. This, this path beneath your feet is your hidden ground of illumination. You are taking up this gift once more. You are awakening to the teachings of Stardust. The ordinary is becoming more precious and beautiful to you, more grace-filled, and it begins to reveal hidden codes of great wisdom. The more you are attentive to this beautiful stardust in your hands, the more subtle and revelatory it becomes. Earth herself begins to speak to us with her beautiful resonant wisdoms, echoing through us with a realm of revelatory memory. The Earth Elders send through us their luminous gestures of grace. We discover that the Earth is haunted with illumination, with true interdimensional loveliness. We see in flashes the lost interdimensional temples of Earth, the way that the Great Ones of Light have with tender grace been so long interwoven with this realm. A hidden history opens up, written with the rocks, the stones and crystals. It is subtle, gentle, marvellous. It enfolds us with great wings of illumined compassion. It brings to us inspiration about how to found a realm of grace how to go forward with loveliness, power and wisdom. Like golden topaz, sacred gestures fall to us. Earth stars, they ignite within us. And we give our gestures, our grace to others. So generous and perpetual is the path of Earth's illumination. She never stops giving to us she never stops speaking to us. We walk the old corridors of the crystal temples. Their subtle and mosaic grace begins to activate with specific guidance and instructions that show us the light path for all beings. The encoded enlightenment dance of earth that she is always trying to give to us. It is the gift 
for which we have, after all, arrived. And she will never cease in passing this on. It is the agreement between us. It is the way that she, as mother, cannot help but be. She cannot abandon us. Her loyalty is eternal and unconditional. If only we knew what an extraordinary mother we have. She always respects the starlight souls as they arrive to her. The starlight soul of every arriving child becomes a part of her dream, is included in her worlds. She allows every starlight child to bring its transformative power to her world, to change her, to bring its gift of metamorphosis to which she surrenders with unconditional grace. It is her subtle worlds of deep light and metamorphosis that I call Lemuria. It is these ancient crystal temples that are layered within her innermost fabric and carry codes of great and valuable purity. Patient crafting of aeons formed these delicate messages and frequencies that the earth is now releasing through her elemental worlds. Like finely wrought lanterns, they show the way to dimensions of earth that have been long hidden and through which we can learn a dance of earthly illumination following the unique and subtle path of the innermost heart. It is not about disappearing within the earth. We do not vanish altogether into inner realms. It is not the hour for this. This has already happened. And now there is emergence. The shining ones as ourselves are stepping forth, carrying the wisdom gift of stardust and offering this openly. We are teaching and inspiring one another, our grace spreading one to another as recognition occurs. The old mosaic rainbow robes clad around the shining ones are walking this world once more. We are so very blessed by their presence and in our recognition we ourselves become that presence. It is our affinity with the eldest realms of earth. We know that we have been here before. You remember the nuances of peace. You remember a way of being steeped in grace. In your aura, these sacred lights of amethyst, topaz and aquamarine ignite. The ancient lights of earth are not concealed. They are walking amongst us. They are passing to us our inheritance. As the portals occur and we step through them, we gain the transparency of the I am infinity presence and we are able to pick up these gifts more and more easily. At the other side of every initiation, these transmissions await us. The more luminous we become, the more sensitive we are to the ancient etiquette of the earth. We are becoming aware once more of the refined relationship she offers us. The Lemurian inheritance is an ethereal one. It involves a passionate love for the earth and a direct perception of her ethereal, etheric nature. This capacity is being restored at this time and there are many transmissions of Lemurian consciousness arriving to us. When the Lemurian vision is applied to the true dimensions of physical incarnation, then 
there is deeply transformational activity. Remember the importance of accepting your genetic bloodlines in this lifetime and the light codes that they contain. You have chosen them as your vehicle in this lifetime for a reason. No matter how removed you feel your birth family has become from cosmic and earthly connection, you will find in your bloodline, however far back, your ancestors in the light. The ones who honoured the pathways of earth and stars, who carried the mythologies that are the vestiges of the Atlantean and Lemurian eras. There is great resonant and earthly power in this connection for you. You will find a star lineage that truly sings in your blood, that calls you back home to your pathways of reverence and balance. All peoples carry these pathways to the Shining Ones. Whether they be Celtic, Norse, Inuit, Sami, Teutonic, Tibetan, Indian, Native American, their ancient heroes and heroines, gods and goddesses, are the Shining Ones who exist in the many-dimensional past of Earth. Still, they stand guardian to the cosmic memory bank of Earth, maintaining our remembrance of ourselves as infinite and elemental beings. Thus we discover that our ordinariness is our stardust, our ground is sacred. Our very bloodlines carry the codes of earthly ascension, charting Earth's angelic past. Follow your own angelic paths, the ones that travel in the song of your blood and the treasure you discover will be boundless. There is a powerful seal set upon our full memory of Lemurian lifetimes. We have lost the memories of walking with the star at our brow, ancient and radiant upon the earth, overflowing with the harmonic wisdom of peace. This was our Lemurian incarnation and manifestation the silver wheel shone within our hearts, and we remembered where we had come from and why. This seal was caused by the experience of betrayal. Our gift was not honoured by those who were upon the earth and who did not have this harmonic wisdom of peace. They were not working towards this end rather towards the maintenance of their own survival, and thus they did not value the beauty of this gift, but were happy to destroy those who brought it. This is one of the oldest stories of humanity, still being played out in the present, and it inspires a passionate ambivalence about our presence on this earth, which can feel so fundamentally precarious. We need to heal this wound if we are to transcend the dance of survival. The dance of trust and distrust and fundamental vulnerability. We must break free from fearfulness. The fear of being attacked. The feeling of vulnerability which makes us conceal ourselves. Either in our ethereal dream worlds in the worlds of nature, or in the shell of a mistaken identity conforming so that we do not attract the attention of others. There is a real danger for Lemurians to remain peripheral and not offer themselves to the main currents of cultural transformation to which they have so much to offer. We must let go of any shadow of victimization and acknowledge that we have volunteered for this journey. It is our own choice. We chose to explore the depths of three-dimensional reality, 
so that we might discover the essence of full incarnation. It has served us well in many respects as we have maintained our biological coherence and expression, allowing the thread of human evolution to carry through unbroken into the present moment. Thus our lifetimes of knowledge and evolutionary expression sustained upon earth. We need no second-hand accounts of these things. We need only access our own memories. We can dance around them like moths around a lamp. We can be watchers of those moths, catching evanescent wing patterns, fragments of memory, from these nuances, these hints, or we can unearth the whole. We can become fully cognizant of the truth. This is a daunting responsibility. Do we want to remember? The seal is in fact the pain of betrayal and we do not wish to re-experience this pain. It caused us to shut down once and part of us wants to leave this mechanism in place. There is a part of us that rages that our innocence should ever have been harmed. We become locked into a dualistic struggle within ourselves between the light and the dark, between innocence and selfishness. Amidst all of this, there is little room for the divine cognizance of the harmonic wisdom of peace. It occurs only as an echo woven into the drama in which we find ourselves. We become preoccupied with self-protection, with attack and defence. We may perceive all of this on a psychic rather than a physical level but this does not change the level of perception. It does not raise it. We cannot masquerade as the injured innocence, the vulnerable purity. This does not reflect our original essence, whose purity is infinitely powerful and whose awareness requires no protection against a dissonant other. It is an ancient seal, deeply and unequivocally held in place by ourselves for a very, very long time. Yet conditions are ripening for its release. Many are recalling their Lemurian existence. We do not need to take their word for it, but release the seal upon our own remembrance and let the memories of these lifetimes flow through us once more. It is not just memories. It is access to a whole level of consciousness and spiritual intention that has been dormant for a long time. We do not need others to teach us of this. It is imperative that we remember for ourselves. It really affects our belief about whether life on earth can become inherently peaceful and spiritualized. Or do we always believe in some survivalist tension, in some necessary strife and darkness? Are we prepared for the full embodiment of our infinite nature? Or do we believe that the earth experience is too dense, too immutable for this? Fortunately, the belief systems are not entirely in the hands of our conscious minds but through the breath of the starlight bridge are in a constant and gentle transmutation, a perpetual dissolution. Of course, we may choose to fight this or align with it. We may choose continuously to rebuild the walls of our old beliefs or to allow the structures of our conscious minds to be transmuted. The Lemurians are the elven ones 
of the immortal forest soul of earth, ta tierra, ta mer. They are guardians of the great overarching harmonies of the elemental kingdom. Their consciousness gifts into the mundane an ethereal innocence and moment-to-moment -moment affinity for the rhythms of cosmic and earthly metamorphosis. They bring gifts for sound and crystal healing, for building with natural forms, for awakening the planet's star paths and recreating the ancient star gardens of Earth. They follow rhythms of formless improvisation attuned intuitively to cosmic inspiration. That contrasts with the spiritual technologies of the light lineages of Atlantis and their more formulaic expression. It becomes more astonishing the more that we remember, for the full harmonic wisdom of peace far outstrips any positive images we currently hold in consciousness. It is the golden wisdom of our own immortal nature, our own profound goodness. It is the intention for this earth to be a home of the angels, for harmonic wisdom to pour forth from all levels of biological life so that biological life dances with the harmonics of the stars. The frequencies of Lemurian consciousness were encoded or received deep within the earth as stardust that has now danced in ancient companionship with this realm for many aeons. The bridge is thus woven for us to remember or encounter our shining nature and ourselves as shining ones who have long danced with the wisdom of Earth. The wisdom of Lemuria is anchored into a set of elder crystals that were created to awaken at this time. The amethysts of the Temple of Arianrod are amongst these. These ancient Lemurian temple crystals are calling out once more. They are emerging at this time and transmitting the ancient wisdom with which they are encoded. Many of these have been safeguarded for a very long time by generations of crystal keepers who have kept their own elder and elemental wisdom intact. They have protected them so that we would access them at this time when the earth could truly arise into her golden dawn once more. These key crystals are absolutely pivotal in anchoring the consciousness of the incoming star frequencies. This is a carefully choreographed receptivity that holds us all in a mighty architecture, invisible but entire. This architecture of the great crystals forms an etheric dome that enshrines the earth and is guardian to our own evolution. The elder crystals have grown according to precise encodings and they are becoming ever more powerful and influential as the procession of star portals occurs and builds our affinity with earth's forgotten wisdom we shall learn more and more from them. We sense their presence ever more clearly as we remember the elder wisdom of the golden dawn within ourselves. We remember the offering we are here to make. We too are crystals or liquid crystalline beings, powerfully encoded transmitters that are transforming the universe with every breath, every thought and feeling. As we connect with the elder crystals through our own vibration, they become ever more powerful 
Every fragment of crystal and quartz communicates in an interdimensional network. The crystals are anchoring, a collective agreement, a kind of consensus that states the Earth's intention of ascension at this time. This is encoded in her crystals. She harbours no vacillation or alternative plan. By using the crystals, you irrevocably alter the ground of your existence. They will vibrate you into the golden dawn with some intensity. They will sing to the crystalline structure of your cells and call them into resonance with the Earth's dawn. Your crystalline structure will reorganize itself to mirror the new fabric of creation and come into alignment with the ancient stardust wisdoms that formed the crystals. The crystals are unrelenting guides in this manner and their programs once underway and connected with you fulfill themselves with great fidelity. In the crystals we perceive the coherent and beautiful structures inherent in the golden dawn and in ourselves. They really support us with holding faith and accessing an elemental consciousness that is free from societal programming. Instead, we attune to the wider frequencies of a loving universe that is offering us a beautiful and extraordinary journey. The crystals support Lemurian consciousness by providing bridges between the physical and ethereal. They are models of multidimensional incarnation and offer companionship. The crystals mirror stability so that integrity is maintained throughout interdimensional transformations. Without the stardust of the crystals and the sacred ground of our ordinariness, we may feel too ethereal to be influential, too will-o'-the-wisp. We may simply feel an intense longing to return to star worlds, forgetting the potentials for which we came to Earth. Yet, within us, there is a steadfast will also, and a capacity for great dedication. We have the capacity to endure great conflict and arrive at new ground within ourselves from which to proceed. As we surrender the powerful seals that have locked away our memories of other dimensional incarnations, our sense of ordinariness itself shifts. The stardust of our bodies begins to resolve into new crystalline formation. There is a grace in having transcended the old lessons in which we have so long been locked. And many places and relationships fall away with this. We may feel a flash of a sense of poverty as this happens, of loss and scarcity arising those are illusory aspects of transformation. We are less alone than ever and possessed of a wondrous abundance. We step off the old karmic wheel and we do not let these considerations entice us back on again. It is not always easy to let the past go. And sometimes we call it back just before it passes over the horizon because we miss its familiar companionship. It feels as though there is something wrong with its absence, but we do not need to fill this gap that has arisen in our lives. It shall fill itself in time with that which has a vaster resonance. This eleventh teaching allows that the very substrate of our lives may be metamorphosis. 
we shall not rest on the same ground, and ordinariness shall alter. Our sense of familiarity shall shift. We trust the new alliances that support this. We trust those who support this expansive and golden ground. Those who with us are able to perceive and celebrate that this is taking place. Especially at moments of dramatic transformation, these alliances serve to help us cross the threshold of metamorphosis at a time when it seems we could go either forward or back. You must be prepared to be the dancer, to take on a fluidity and responsiveness to the beyond. There is no title or preparation for this dance other than the calling of which you are intuitively aware. The forest is a reigning ruined palace through which the blackbirds dance. I have sought her, the dear elder, and now I have found her. She walks along the river. There are shards of yellow star that she gathers into her embroidered pouch. She gathers the amethyst and dark golden lostness scattered, the backward glow of moonstone tucked into her embroidered pouch. She walks amongst the stars of the forest, looking for treasure, Tariat and Tierra, as she goes on bare feet. Rare one, far one, lavender robe iridescence, damask of amethyst, she approaches, raindrops, blackbirds singing. Iridescence, willow eyes, willow feet, bells, dragon golds and moonstones, amber. A woven belt around her waist of dragon lights. The stain of earth on her feet, dark spirals. She walks up the river carrying the seeds of the moons, each one a fragment, a latticework of ancient dreamings, worn and worn into. She carries in her willow basket the seeds of this sun, ready for birth. She comes here along the aquamarine river after the snow melt, her ancient footsteps lilt with violet light. I call out to her. She knows that I am here. She looks up, her expression inscrutable. We are layer upon layer of a mysterious becoming. Timelessly she holds the simplicity and dignity of Earth's past. Like the hidden, ordinary, subtle ground, she can travel unnoticed. She kneels in leggings of doeskin, examining the trail. She follows the ancient path of the deer. It is their dance across the earth she mimics. They trample the way, unveiling the silken paths of hope of the earth. I hear her whisper, the stardust path has not been walked for a very long time. It is a precious path, almost forgotten. For you it will be a formless dance, a path of light. She comes with her wild, soft darkness, a nomad. I see her through the moonflower of my blood the murmur and tempo of dark grace, old light. I give to you, she tells me, this gift of stardust. It is the beginning of life upon earth and reminds us that no matter how far we travel, this beginning, this ground, is a precious gift. Out of this, Everything is woven. 
It is the ground for every epiphany, every dawn. This is your gratitude for your ordinariness, your earthliness. Keep this ground sacred, keep this stardust held as precious. I give this to you so that you may re-consecrate the ground of your life. Weave this stardust into the pages of the Deerskin book. Begin with this, always begin with this. I hold out the deerskin pouch and she blows the magic dust towards me, grey motes upon the air. I gather them into the pouch and bind it with a cord, storing it within the folds of my cloak. I thank her for this precious gift. This is a part of the soul of the deerskin book, an essential aspect of its teachings. It is the starlit, early hours of morning. The faintest crescent moon hangs in the sky as I travel up the river. The barge glides into the shore under the forest canopy. I disembark my long indigo skirts caked in mud and travel stains. The elders gather at the shore and help me from the boat. They guide me to sit beside the fire. I sit down, my body weary, eyelids flickering, aching in every bone. There are the white tents of the elders. There are the drums calling to the dawn. There is smoke and firelight, opaque butterfly flares in the night forest. This is the story of service, of dedication in the citadel where the dreams are woven. In the tattered light of the firelight, there are the great faces flickering, playing white drums. This is an elder butterfly race of dreams, building the shining magnificence of holy places. The world has ended and the new one not yet begun. I go to the tent of white deerskin. Within the tent she sits by the fire and the flames are amber and violet and around her are the baskets of gathered moon fire. I have travelled a long way to this place and it is a quiet sanctuary in the dusk. She gives me pieces of amber resin and dried lavender to throw in the fire, offerings of thanks for what has been. I tell her I have the pouch of stardust. I followed the dear paths, flung like silken banners throughout every land, seeking the dear elder. Her gift is needed to complete the silver wheel, to write the deerskin book. She carries the stardust that holds the purity of the beginning it is this that needs to be shaken out upon the ground we stand on. We shall give it to the first shoots of the dawn. The elder comes to me and kneels where I sit. She touches her brow to mine and it is as though an amethyst star flames at her forehead. She rubs white chalk into my feet, blessing the trail. It is good to feel the touch of her hands and the iridescent flame of hope within them. The immortal path runs beneath and through all things. It travels on timelessly and there is always the invisible choice to follow. These are the paths of fire and amber, stars and willow, sapphire and turquoise. Here the wheel spins differently. The wind turns another way. The elders come with me. Beneath a stand of bare-stemmed hazels are the first snowdrops. They nod pale in the darkness. They are the sentinels of the coming dawn, the gradual re-emergence of the light. I take the pouch from the folds of my cloak, unloosen its fastening, 
and pour out a little of the stardust onto the frosted ground by the flower's stem. We all stand in quietness, gazing down. It is not finished, this interpretation. We spill silver into many destinations. And it seems to me this moment that there is no more forest trail to be explored, only a stilling into the grace that has been exposed. There is this, the immortal self flung out through heaven and earth in a vision of herself. A deer who, pausing for a moment, knows all the paths that she will run. And so with love, gifting this reading of the 11th chapter of the Silver Wheel, and here is the illustration of the dear elder, try to bring her into focus. There she is. So blessings and love and um, yeah, I shall see you again. I shall be back. <laughs> Very much love. Tatiana Tokere.